The Silver Spirit isn't quite as cheap as it used to be a couple of years ago. It's certainly not a really pristine 97 Spur like we have here. But there's still an affordable way into the Rolls and Bentley ownership experience. What do they like to own though? Where do you get parts if you need them? How easy is it to get parts? To find out a little bit more, we came to Wimbledon, where you'll find the headquarters of Introcar who can supply pretty much everything you might need for a Rolls or Bentley of this era. And it seems like they are actually a very easy ownership prospect if you know the right people. This is a, a 1997 um, Silver Spur. Um, again, Rolls-Royce have always put massive amounts of, of development work into their cars. When the Silver Spirit first came out, it actually came out about three years too early. The early Silver Spirits were a little bit of a disaster, especially around the doors uh, with wind noise and then trying to get the doors to fit. And this is just a ni nice example of a, of a late wrap round bumper Spirit Spur. I had a, a phone call from a company called Unique Vacations and my name is Sandal and they said, oh, we've got two cars that are coming back from the sandals resort of hotels in jamaica and i said oh, okay fine so can we send you these two cars so i said yeah so there was a 1996 silver spirit and this silver spur here the two cars weren't strapped down and they spent seven weeks at sea smashing each other to pieces i restored the silver spirit and sold it and then with the proceeds restored this 1997 silver spur the, the silver spirit motor car you can use it a lot more as an everyday car it's got a bit more room inside here and, it, and it's just it's a slightly more modern drive i suppose this year marks 40 years of the silver spirit which is quite some going really, considering that they managed to uh, use the underpinnings of the Silver Shadow uh, effectively right into the 90s. This is one of the last cars that was made, it's a 97. It's actually a Silver Spur, which was the name given to the long wheelbase version. We've got an extra four inches in the back doors here, complete with fold-up picnic tables and a little fold-out little container for your, uh, your wine and your decanter. Using the Shadow platform for a new generation of car did present some problems for Rolls-Royce because in the American market they really needed a big and imposing car to compete at this price level. So they employed some really neat little touches, the shape of the headlights and the shape of the rear lights, bonnet, things like that, were all designed just to make the Silver Spirit seem a little bit lower, a little bit wider and a little bit longer than it really was. And it works too, it looks like a really big car when you walk up to it. But once you get inside and you pull away, certainly after a few minutes, it doesn't feel like a massive land yacht. It feels more like something like a Jaguar XJ saloon. It shrinks around you like all the best cars do. Driving one of these in traffic is as easy as the shadow. You can see the corners of the wings, you can see the spirit of ecstasy on the front there. I'd say this is very refined. Kind of capital V, capital R, just felt very refined. Very powerful, it's got Zytec fuel injection in this. Can't really go wrong with them, they're such good cars. You know, it is incredible the value for money you get. I don't think there's anything else out there that you can buy for the money which gives you what you have with these. Heavy cars, they eat suspension bushes, ball joints, things like that. But the problem is when, when one or two start to wear out, they, they knock on, they knock out the others. You don't want problems that, that you ignore. You need to just jump on them, fix them, fix them properly, and then actually you save yourself money down the, down the road. You drive them and they, they will tend not to go wrong. I reckon for every pound of, of money you spend on petrol, you save two in maintenance by driving them regularly. That's my advice. Don't leave them, don't store them. Rolls-Royce ownerships made it ever easier with industry specialists dedicated to the parts aftermarket. Introcar is committed to the remanufacture of parts which are no longer available and has brought over 6,000 Rolls-Royce and Bentley parts to market as part of their prestige parts range, aiming to meet or exceed original manufacturer specifications. This makes keeping cars roadworthy far easier, as the term no longer available is less frequently heard. We've got the turbocharged engine here and I think it's had a little bit of an uprate too, so I think we're talking about 400 horsepower and all I've got to do is tickle it and off we go. <laughs> it's livelier than any vehicle this size and weight has got any right to be. I think if I owned one of these, I'd just run out of petrol immediately because all I would do is just keep, keep enjoying the performance and the superbly restrained way it goes about it. The interior was modernised with the Spirit. Certainly the early ones had a few digital displays which didn't find favour with traditional Rolls-Royce buyers, but the later cars like this, they're a lovely blend of old and new. We've got a digital odometer, but the rest of it is actually pretty much traditional circular analogue dials. We've got lovely touches though which uh, just make a difference to owning a car. Seat heaters and we've got modern air conditioning and there's a punchy modern sound system, all nicely integrated within the old school Rolls-Royce style. Some of the early spirits are quite daggy and they weren't, it took them about another 
three years before they got the development of the Silver Spirit right. Spirit 2, you've got active ride suspension, you've got some nice inlays in the wood, you've got alloy wheels. Probably Spirit 2 would be a good level entry car. Active ride is good. It's not so good when it goes wrong because obviously the shock absorbers are more expensive. Some of the active ride cars have been converted to run back on normal shock absorbers. It's really down to the condition and the personal preference of the of the owner or, or the buyer. Rust is a major killer. Just making sure that you get a good look underneath the car. Things like major amounts of warning lights on on the dashboard, especially with the Spirit 2. If the dashboard's nice and clear, it means you've got a good car and hopefully everything's working as it should be. I would always recommend these cars to anyone. You as a family could enjoy this car, a nicer silver Spirit, but again, buy it on condition. But be warned, the turbo cars always get pushed along hard uh, and they've quite often had hard lives. Despite the modern touches and the very modern way it drives, you still feel you're in something special and it's still got that undefinable Rolls-Royce character to it. It certainly feels like you're driving something different from the regular luxury saloon that's mass-produced, an S-Class or a 7 Series, and that's the appeal of these cars. It's impressive to realise that this was still a competitive product right into the late 90s, despite essentially underneath being based on a 1960s shadow platform. I think Rolls-Royce really had something special there. In fact, there's really no reason why you couldn't use a, a late Silver Spirit like this as a daily driver. It's modern enough to do that. Of course, you might not want to because you would be spoiling that certain Rolls-Royce charm, but you could.